Good evening. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh -oh. Trying to give some time for some more people to join. How are you? Hey, good evening. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> hey. I'm going to be on here talking about, I was on the phone with a client earlier, and I realized a lot of people are getting a lot of things confused when it comes to funding and filing business taxes. Hello, good evening. So that's what I want to get on here and just enlighten you all on, because I'm realizing that a lot of people just are getting things confused applying for all of these programs. I know a lot of people, a lot of businesses have been suffering. So I just wanted to explain to you all how everything is connected. Everything is connected. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> Hello. So I'm trying to give a little bit more time. Hopefully they're going to notify some more people. Some more people will join. But I will save this. So people can go back and watch it. So yeah, I'm going to be talking about filing business taxes and how it relates to different funding options that you may be trying to apply for or qualify for, okay? That's what I'm going to be talking about this evening. So hopefully um, some more people will join. Just give it, I'm going to just give it a few more minutes, maybe like another minute or two. Okay, so I'm guessing everyone has probably filed their taxes already anyway for their business. Hopefully so. I'm actually still working on clients because a lot of people have to go on extension. So I'm still working on taxes. Good evening, good evening. I usually go live on more than one app, but... I, I didn't feel like doing all of that today. <laughs> I didn't feel like doing all of that today. So I'm just on IG and then I'm going to save this and upload it to my other platforms. All right. Hello, hello. I don't know how many people are on. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start talking, and usually some people come on after I've already started talking. So, all right. The first thing I want to mention, um, in terms of like when you're filing your taxes, your business taxes, and when you're trying to show profits versus trying to show losses. Let me explain how this works. Okay. Now, if you are a... Um, Let's say you want to show profitability, right? You want to show profitability because you're trying to qualify for some type of business funding program, especially like when SBA was doing all of that, um, giving out grant money or giving out loans. What was going on with SBA is that you had to come in profitable, okay? Because if you didn't come in profitable or, well, let me say this, they were basing how much they were going to give you based on what your business tax return showed, whether you file a Schedule C or whatever other form you filed, that's what they were basing their determination. So let's say if you were showing 50K, they're not going to, they weren't going to loan you 100K, right? Your, your revenue was showing 50K. So that's how that works you can't if and then if you were like writing off everything let's say you made 50k but then you was writing off like half of that 25k then they were going to look at that 25k and that's what they were going to base the loan on okay so i wanted to explain that because i don't know if a lot of people really understood how that worked you cannot have it both ways you can't be trying to let's say if you're trying to qualify for some of these like economic, I want, I want to call them like economic um, funding or economic loans. You have to show that your business suffered a some type of loss. They have to look at two years worth and they have to figure out, okay, 
did the business actually suffer a loss when compared to the previous filing? And if you actually made more money, then you're probably not, you're not going to qualify for that economic loan funding because your business showed it made more money when it compared to the previous year. Now, to the flip side of that, obviously, if your business can show that you made less when compared to the previous year, then as long as you met other criteria, you'll qualify for that particular economic funding, whatever it was you were going for. Okay, you see me looking down because I'm looking at my notes. Okay, so now the other situation is sometimes you have businesses like you're trying to build business credit, you're trying to show profitability, you know. So in that case, your tax returns do make a difference because the same case scenario. You don't want to, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't want to look like you're always coming in the red, always coming in the loss and think that you're going to qualify for some type of business credit, like big business credit. It just doesn't work like that. Okay. So um, that's the other thing I wanted to explain. If you want to come in strong and qualify for larger money or whatever for when it comes to business credit, you, your business has to show that it's making money, that it's making revenue. Okay, now let me see some of my other notes here. So hopefully you all understand that or, and when you come back and watch this at another time. Okay, I'm going to upload it to my other platform. So, all right, now let's see. I have a note here. Okay, let's say, for example, you um, have an LLC, you file a Schedule C form, or even if you're a sole proprietorship, but mostly a lot of people are LLCs at this point, and you know you want to qualify, good evening, and you know you want to qualify for a mortgage or some other type of large purchase. It's the same case scenario that I was just explaining before. You can't have it both ways. If you know that at some point you're going to want to apply for a mortgage or start investing in property and buying property and things like that, your business, can, your let's say is your Schedule C, you can't come in with a, well, whatever you come in on a net, whether you come in at a net profit or a net loss, you cannot, you're not going to qualify but for so much on the mortgage or whatever other type of large purchase you're trying to make. Okay, again, you can't have it both ways. If you know you're going to go up for a mortgage and try to get funding as an LLC owner, maybe you want to purchase property, whatever your net is on your Schedule C form, that's what they're going to look at. Okay, they're not going to look at your gross. So that also makes a difference. So you have to remember that. Just like I explained before, you can't have it both ways. So usually what's going to happen if you want to qualify for a mortgage, good evening. <laughs> if you want to qualify for a mortgage as a Schedule C filer, or if they're going to be using your other business returns because maybe you're applying to funding as a business owner and they need to look at your business returns, again, you have to... Yeah, that they're going to be looking at what you net. They're not going to look at gross when it comes to qualifying for mortgages and things like that and investment properties. They're looking at your net. So please keep that in mind, okay, because it makes a difference. Now, let's see. Oh, yeah, I have a note here. Sometimes it may make, um, it may be to your advantage to like change your business structure. You know, when I'm coaching and consulting people, I let them know you don't have to stay where you started. You can switch up your business structure if you need to, okay? If you start out as a sole proprietor, you can turn into an LLC. Or if you start out as an LLC, you can then convert to a corporation. You can choose to be an S-Corp, a C-Corp. So business structures make a difference, okay? And this is why it's important to work with a business consultant, work with a business coach, I offer all of those services. <laughs> so it's important to work with a professional to help you make important business decisions like this, okay? Now let's see what else I have here. Um, you qualify for various programs and funding, yes, based on how your business is structured. That is correct. I have a note here. So I'm making my notes. So yes, that is correct. You're gonna qualify on 
ba but basically what I'm trying to say is what you will and won't qualify for does have a lot to do with how your business is structured. Okay, so that's important depending on what you want to apply for for these programs. Okay, um, and I'll give you an example in a few minutes of what I'm talking about where there was a really good program going around and I'm, I'm going to circle back to that in a minute. Okay, so I put, put that out, pointed that out. Business loan and grants. Oh, yes, business loans and business grants are not considered taxable income. Okay, so when people were filing taxes with small business owners, you know, a lot of people had gotten PPP, had gotten the EIDL and other funding because there's so much coming out at this point. But please know that when you get business loans and business grants, it is not taxable income. Please do not add that to your revenue, okay? It's not taxable income. And then the flip side of that, because it's not taxable income, you also cannot write off your loan payments, okay? Your business loan payments are not tax deductions, okay? So that's another thing. Now. The good thing is if you do take out a loan and or you get grant or whatever, let's just just take let's just talk about business loans for a minute. If you do take out a business loan, although your payments on the loan are not tax deductible, the interest. Now you are gonna have interest, right? On your um good evening. <laughs> you are gonna have interest on your business loan. So your interest can be written off as a business expense. Okay, so I wanna explain that. All right, let's see what else I have. Business loan, yeah, I said that business loan payments are not tax deductible. Loan interest is tax deductible. Okay, now I'm going to mention here something called employer retention credit because when I was saying earlier, depending on how you're structured, okay, is what determines if you qualify for certain programs. So let's talk about the employer retention credit for a minute, okay? where business owners were able to get up to 26K per employee. All right, now let me say this. Um, this is how this works, okay? All right, employer retention credit. You hear the word employer. That means you have to be employing whether it's yourself or other people. Now, um, if you're an LLC owner, you file Schedule C, you didn't qualify for employer retention credit like if you're your only if you're your only employee okay because you can't be a w2 to yourself as a schedule c filer okay um but there's ways to get around it when i said you can do certain things like depending on how you're structured now what the irs is allowing even though the program has closed you can retroactive that employer retention credit now, there are steps in place that you would have to circle back and do to qualify to be able to do that. Um, you know, you definitely need to work with like a professional like myself or someone else who could help make sure that you meet all the requirements to be able to retro and do that. But um, if you did have people working for you and you were just an LLC filer and you have people working for you as an employee, you know, hopefully you applied for it. If you didn't, you can still retro it, okay? And you can apply, all right? So, um, and I do offer business consultations. I do offer business coaching. Business coaching is a higher level than the business. Business consultations are just like one-on-one, -on -one, one and done. You book a consultation with me, you get your questions, your direct questions answered, right? Um, and some more guidance. Business coaching is on a higher level, okay? It's usually about like a six week type of situation, six week commitment, but you're more than welcome to DM me for more information on either one, all right? So I explained to you about the employee retention credit and yeah, and like basically what I was saying is that sometimes other things that you wanna apply for, again, it depends on how you're structured because Unfortunately, sometimes a lot of sole proprietors are not eligible for certain funding, okay? Um, again, because you're not structured a certain way based on what you were trying to apply to get, okay? Hopefully, I explained that as best as possible. All right, let's see. Some people actually have no idea how they're structured. I have that in my notes here, and this is, this is a whole fact. Some people have no idea how they're structured, and let me tell you how this can come about. So you 
register with the state as one thing, with your secretary of state, with whatever, you know, however you had set yourself up as. Then you go to apply for your EIN. Now, when you go to apply for your EIN with the IRS, you pick something different without even knowing that it's not the same thing that you chose to be when you registered with your secretary of state. I've seen this countless times countless times. People tell me, oh, I'm set up as this. And then when I say, well, give me your EIN letter, because I do require that, because when it comes to filing taxes, it doesn't matter what you registered as the Secretary of State, you have to file your taxes based off of what the IRS knows you are under your EIN, okay? So that's why I always require that, because it avoids a whole big unnecessary problem happening. And believe me, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. People think they're one thing. I just recently had someone send me their documents. They had Schedule C forms. And then when I had them send me their EIN, they were a partnership, which is a whole different situation. Sorry, I'm just dismissing something. So that's a whole different situation. And I was like, wow, um, that's something. You know, <laughs> they didn't even realize they were... They were uh, set up under IRS as a partnership. So you got to know your business structures, guys. Okay. Let's see what that says. Um, they use my social. Will I be able to establish business credit? You may want to DM me. All right. And um, I'll answer that. Okay. And uh, maybe you want to book me for a consultation, but you can DM me and I'll answer your question. Um, but I get a moment, okay, because I get lots and lots of DMs, all right, so bear, just bear with me. Okay, um, or I'll scroll back at the end, just give me a second. Okay, now let's see what else. Um, yeah, so some people have no idea how they're structured. Um, and yeah, and so that's pretty much it. I think, yeah, that's, I went over everything. Um, you basically need to, I cannot impact enough that you really need to work with a business professional. I know, guys, sometimes you just want to wing it. You want to Google stuff. Like, Google is very helpful, but you're not really going to get your direct questions specific to you. And sometimes you have a whole situation going on here, okay? Certain things may benefit you from the tax side, but then it's hurting you from the other side. So it depends on what your end goal is, you know. I even advise some people you maybe don't want to write off everything and write your whole life away because, again, if you want to come in strong, financially strong, you want to show profitability. And usually any situation is going to look at, like, the last two years of history, okay? So I hope that was helpful, and I hope you all have business bank accounts. Um, you should definitely check out my YouTube because I have a lot of helpful um videos on there with all this kind of content. I have courses, so check out my courses. And again, you can book me for a one-on-one -on -one consultation or business coaching, which is high level. All right, now let me scroll back and, and see. What, okay, I applied for a business credit card through Amex, and they didn't ask for my EIN, but used my social Will I be able to establish business credit through that? Mm, it depends, okay? It depends because you have to find out um, who they report to, okay? Like, do you have your stuff in place, like your DUNS number? Um, do you have that in place? And find out if they report to, like, Equifax Business, Experian Business Credit. That's the main thing you need to know. Um, if they ask for your social, it's highly likely that is not really a it may have been a business card but it may have been requiring a pg which is a personal guarantee okay so that's what it kind of sounds like to me and amex has so many um so it really just depends okay um yeah but you usually want to find stuff that if you can find without um personal guarantee required all right where they're strictly going off a of business ein Okay, um, so any other questions anyone have before I sign off? I do thank you all for coming on. I always say I'm going to try to go live more often, but you know, I am a consultant and coach, so my schedule takes my schedule stays pretty packed. All right, so thank you all. I hope this was helpful and take care. Have a good night.